so uh, Wild Tangent is a uh, games distribution channel for both Android and, um, and Windows and web and social. Um, we're also an advertising platform, so it's, you know, very well known for bringing brand advertisers into games. Uh, and we're also uh, a publisher and a studio. So as a studio, we get to partake in our publishing efforts, so we get to kind of eat our own dog food. And when we talk to game developers, we know a lot of the same pains that they go through. So the whole point of this talk is, you know, what's old is, is new again. A lot of times when we have a new platform, whether it's Facebook, whether it's an app store, we think this self-publishing concept is this brand new revolutionary idea and we don't need, we don't need publishers, we don't need uh, you know, anyone to help us if we're a game developer. <clears throat> but the reality is, is that you do and it's the same as before. You're gonna make a product but you need someone to take that product to market. Um, and the trick is you wanna make sure that you don't pick the wrong uh, partner. Because uh, if you pick the wrong partner, you're gonna have you know, uh, no success and probably not be able to make games anymore which is really what everyone is striving to do. Um, and if you do self-publish, if you do kind of fall for uh, the, the concept of self-publishing, which is odd because we just heard this noise a little earlier ago, this is probably what you're going to hear with regards to your audience. Um, it's incredibly difficult to publish in the mobile market now. The number of games that are being submitted every day to app stores is in you know, 300 a day. The number of apps that are in these app stores are in the hundreds of thousands to millions. It is basically a lottery ticket to try to think that you're gonna make it into the top charts organically based on the quality of your game. It's just not gonna happen. You have to have a go-to-market strategy in order for this to work. So it doesn't mean that you can't do it yourself, but it does mean that you're basically gonna have to build a publishing unit within your company, and that's a question that you need to make. Are you gonna hire up? Are you gonna spend the resources? Are you gonna spend the time? Uh, and also, do you have the expertise in order to go to market? So one thing I like to highlight is there really is a massive difference between SRP and, and, and free to play. And I don't mean that in the sense of, you know, of course, you sell the title and you give it away for free and then try to make money later, but really the life cycle and the marketing of those titles. And, and an analogy that I like to use is the difference between movies and TV shows. An SRP title is like a movie, right? You're going to make a movie, you're going to be done, you're going to have a marketing department whose sole job is to get butts in the seats opening weekend, you're trying to make as much money as possible the opening weekend, and you have some expected trail off in there. That is the old way of thinking of $60 MSRP titles. That's the old way of thinking of SRP titles for 99 cents on mobile. And it's also why you hear you know, bragging rights of biggest opening weekend and, and entertainment is for you know, Call of Duty 4 or whatever it was. That's great, but that's not what free to play is. Free to play is more like a TV show. You're gonna have a pilot, you're gonna have a test market, you're gonna have to care and feed this product. You're gonna have to figure out, based on feedback from the audience every week, every day, how to make the product successful. And at the end of the day, as far as the investment is concerned, Seinfeld is a much better investment than Avengers. I know Seinfeld is old, but it's a good analogy because they're still making hundred million dollars. All right, so with that, another aspect of why free to play. A lot of folks think, hey, it's free to play, that's the latest, greatest, we're gonna fall for um, you know, the, the, the monetization du jour. But I wanted to highlight one mechanical reason why FTP is gonna continue to take over. Don't get bored, this is the only graph, I promise. Uh, but on the left, you have your prototypical economics 101 supply-demand curve. The whole point of SRP is to figure out what is the right price point to sell something for the maximum amount of revenue because you only have one price point basically to sell it at. And especially in the mobile market, that gets written in stone. You have one SRP pr price, you have to sell it to, you know, put it on sale for a weekend for everyone or, or not. You, you just have one price point. But the problem is, is that with mobile, the way that the kind of tragedy of the commons played out with app stores and the way that they did organic charts out of the gate resulted in everyone driving down their price points to the lowest possible, which was 99 cents. The issue though is that discovery of your game is incredibly hard. We just talked about the, the volume of games that are inside of these app stores. You're not gonna be discovered. So you have a basically infinitesimal price point and you're not gonna be discovered, which means that you're now relying on CPI. Right? You're reliant on cost per installs. You're gonna have to pay to get users. Well, the problem is, is that CPI prices continue to increase because of the success of free to play. Once CPI crosses over your de facto SRP price, SRP is dead. You have to go to free to play in order to successfully get users because you're not gonna get it organically. And you're not gonna necessarily get it editorially. So this is the engine of why free to play is starting to take over. You may be able to find genres where it's cheap to get users, but in general, 
a lot of people don't focus on this. They think it's just because, oh, I convert users and they're buying into the $600,000 a day or whatever the latest you know, large number is of what people are making money. But this is the main reason why. If you can't buy users at a, with a margin, you got a problem. Um, let me talk about this. So you've made your game. You've created your masterpiece. Everything's great. You think you're done, right? You, you, you got a little bit of testing less. Now's the time for us to go to market. I'm going to throw it in the app store and see what happens. Well, that's actually when the work starts. Um, you're probably buying into this notion of meritocracy, right? I'm going to make a great game. Great games are successful. I'm measured based on the success of my game. My game is better than your game. I should make more money than you. Ultimately, I should be more successful. But you're going to get lost. Um, it's not going to work. You're going to put the game out there, and no one's going to find it. You're going to have one little blip, get all excited. The next day, you're going to drop down the charts, and then you're going to have to figure out, now what? So you think, OK, I made my game. I bite into it. Now what the hell do we do in order to publish a game? So we've got to go on our bombing run here in order to figure out how to make money. Well, you're going to need all these things if you don't have a partner. You're going to need to figure out how to tune your retention. Am I keeping users 3, 7, 14 days? Am I keeping them around? Are they engaged with my product? Do they like my product? I'm going to have to tune the monetization. Am I actually getting people to convert in order to spend money? I'm going to have to see, is there a technology platform for messaging, for, <clears throat> for sending notifications, for sending email, all the other marketing things that you're going to need. I need a go-to-market strategy. I'm going to have to talk to PR. I'm going to have to have a biz dev force in order to talk to the editorial staff. I need to find out all the various app stores. Who are they? Who do I need to talk to? How long does it take? What's the lead-in lead in time in order to get editorial support rather than just submitting the app? Because a lot of times when you work with an app store, if you submit an app and then later on talk to the editorial, too late. Your product is old. Right? So you got to do it the right way. How are you going to get customers? What's your marketing platform for sending emails and all that other good stuff? These are all the things that you need in a Swiss Army knife. And if you don't have it, you're probably going to have to find a publishing partner in order to do that with you. The other thing that you're going to do, which is very common these days, is the, what I call the fail colony tour. You're going to go into Canada and Australia. Why the hell is everyone going to Canada and Australia? If you think about it, it's kind of weird. The reason is, is that the app stores do not provide a beta program. And these guys are, you know, Canada is about 10% of the US. You get a 10% beta test if you go into Canada. And to some extent, they, they're just like us, right? So they convert in the same way. They behave pretty much the same way. They spell things eh, close enough. So that's why you go into Canada and Australia, is to get that data without, without going into the US market and um, having a problem when it comes to editorial or not being ready for the millions of users that hopefully you're going to get on the US front. So that's why you go into Canada. And what's interesting is that this is now leading to something that's completely counterintuitive, which is Paid acquisition in Canada and Australia is actually one of the most expensive. It's because everyone's doing their beta tests and spending in Canada. You put your game out very, very quietly. You go spend a couple hundred bucks, spend a couple thousand bucks in order to get some statistically significant number of users into your game, 10,000, whatever the number is, for you to figure out what's going on. OK, the other thing that you're going to need to think about is a solution to do an A-B test. Now, why the hell? Do you need to do an A-B test? The reason is, is that it takes too long to update your games via the App Store. Right? You're going to want to think about, just, to, just do me a favor and just think of a couple, which is if you're going to have a free-to-play game and you're going to have some currency, just have an A-B test of what the currency grant is. I'm going to give you 5,000 or 10,000, and then track from that point on. That will tell you which way you need to go, because it's not going to be right. That we know. Whatever numbers you pick are not going to be right out of the gate. But if you at least have two data points, if one of them is trending better, then you know that you should steer that way versus the other way. Are you giving too many coins and no one's converting? Are you not getting enough coins and you don't have retention? That will help. The other thing that you can do is you can do an A-B test with regards to how an upsell looks. You want to do kind of the Vente Grande tall presentation, or do you want the tall Grande Vente presentation? Those type of things will help you know if you're going to convert users. This data needs to fit into some type of tracking system, into some type of analytics, analytic system, and probably be in front of someone who knows how to analyze the data and help you, the game developer, figure out what to do next. They're not just going to you know, spring forth from their head saying, here's the answer of how to fix it, but they are going to give you guidelines of what you need to do next. And that's a very important part of the process when it comes to publishing. <coughs> then it's going to be about tuning. You're probably going to do one phase, get some data. You're going to do another phase, get some more data. This is not going to take one month. One of the things that we hear a lot is game developers say, I'm done with my game. I'll be worldwide in a month. That's Unless you are very gifted and you did it right out of the gate first and you're one of the lottery ticket winners and good on you, this is not going to take a month. This is going to take a while because the turnaround time for app store approval is already a couple weeks. 
So you need a couple weeks to, you gotta wait a couple weeks to be approved, wait another week in order to buy users, wait another week in order to do, you know, to analyze the data, that's a month right there before you've even started in order to make an update. So you need to build this in to your budgeting, you need to build this into your process, and you also need to talk to, develop, uh, talk to publishers at the right stage in order to get help with this. Because otherwise you're gonna have to do it yourself, you're gonna be staring at spreadsheets and not know what to do. Editorial. Editorial is like, this is reading tea leaves. Right? It's not many app stores are gonna tell you, yes, I'm gonna highlight your title. I'm gonna give you the hero placement on the front of the app store on, you know, on August 15th. That's not gonna happen. That's just, that's not the way they work. They have so much being thrown at them that they've put up a, uh, a church and state scenario. You actually can't talk to the editorial teams. You have to talk to the developer support teams. They don't talk to each other, nudge, nudge, wink, wink. But you, you're gonna have to think about this and see if you have a shot of getting editorial because you're talking about a couple million installs if you're able to do it right. It's part of the process and it's something that you need a publisher who has those relationships, has a biz dev force that's gonna go out and talk to these guys in order to support you. The other thing is now you gotta come up with a plan for paid customer acquisition. It's part of the process. It can't be something that's a nice, to, nice to have. And to some extent, you need a Scrooge McDuck amount of money in order to make this work. Um, if you don't, then you're going to publish. It's going to be in the lower 100s of some chart of your genre. You're gonna get dozens of downloads a day, and maybe you'll be drinking a lot. I don't know what's gonna happen. But paid user acquisition absolutely has to be part of your process. And also, depending on what the channel is, you need, you need a publisher that understands what channels work, what don't work, how to target it correctly in order to get your CPI to be tuned so that the numbers work out in order to sustain the business. So, what about charting? You hear so much about charting. You hear all the time, this game is number one, this game is number two. It just sits there at all times. And to some extent, it's these guys are playing at a level that they're making so much revenue that they can spend a ton in order to stay on the charts. And to some extent, you hear the numbers of what the revenue is they bring per day. You don't hear much they clear per day. You don't hear how much their profit is per day. If they're, spending if they're making 600,000 per day, what are they spending? I'm guessing it's a high number because every billboard known to man is covered with some of these games. And to some extent, charting could be a function of vanity, right? I mean, there's only so many slots. In this case, you can only see, what, four? Um, that's a pinhole of an ocean of content. And so I encourage you not to focus too much on charting, if at all. You need to focus on paid customer acquisition with a positive ROI if you want to have a sustainable business. You may get lucky, and that's great, but other than that, um, paying to get into the top four is a very, very, very expensive proposition. And so I encourage you to think about paid customer acquisition differently. Think about getting users for less than you make off of them. So now you publish your game. Now you gotta do the care and feeding of it. A lot of times game developers go, I made a game, dust the hands, I wanna move on to game number two. But the reality is you're gonna have to market to existing users, you gotta send them notifications both for retention and increasing engagement, you gotta send them emails, you gotta put new content, you gotta new features, you have to have someone doing community support, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Some of these things can be done with the help of a publisher so that you can focus on what you're good at, which is you built the studio in order to develop games. Okay, so last acronym. Uh, you know, alphabet soup time. This is the name of the game. I've said it before, but you need, this is the equation. This is all you need. And it's the net, net long-term value of a user needs to be greater than the effective CPI. The amount that you make net from an app store and all the other costs needs to be greater than your effective cost per install. If that is true, you have an engine, you can pay for customer acquisition. If it is not true, you're gonna spend money and you're gonna lose the money and you're gonna be done. A lot of times you see these different metrics and there's a lot going on, there's lots of different acronyms, people are inventing things at all times. But this is the simplest way to think about it. You think, oh, it's a 99 cent transaction. Well, that's really 70 cents for you, right? It's a dollar nine, no, that's a dollar 40 for you. You need to remember that 30 points are coming off the top from a given app store, so you need to think about what the net long-term value is in order to make that work. So, you need to, once, once you're done developing, that's when the work starts. And these are all the things you're gonna, you're gonna need resources, you're gonna need people, you're gonna need money in order to focus on how am I going to publish into these given markets. You're gonna need the expertise. A lot of times, someone who is very good as a game developer, and also someone who's very good at game design, and also someone who's very good at creating a game economy, may not have the expertise in order to analyze the data that's coming in in order to feed into that game economy in order to make it work better. 
you're gonna need biz dev, right? You're gonna need some person hitting the streets, talking to all the various app stores and all the various channels that are out there. It's not just submit your game into the iOS app store and hope. You need someone who's talking to Apple. You need someone who's talking to all the various other partners that are out there. You need to have you know, potentially some paid, uh, paid channels where it's not just CPI, you're, you're buying a campaign on a given site. There's lots of different things to look at and that takes time for people to understand how that stuff works. The other thing to keep in mind, one of the reasons why um, you know, publishers are helping out so much is that they have an existing audience. They already have X games that are live and they already have an audience within those games. So if you publish with them, you will likely be cross-promoted amongst those titles. That's just free or, in, let's say, included customer acquisition. So if you look at someone who has a large audience, that's a great starting point to say, hey, my game will be put in front of them. In addition to, we're going to do a paid campaign and editorial and all that other good stuff. Um, and then, frankly, you're going to need money. Well, I mean, it's, it all boils down to money, right? I mean, as, as, as uh, unromantic as that is to say, if you're going to publish a game, there's going to have to be money involved. And a lot of times, that's not thought of until it's too late. All right? And whether you're bringing the money to the table, or the publisher's bringing the money to the table, or bringing the value to the table, it's part of the equation. You have to include it in your plans. So bluntly, you need a publisher. Now, either you need to partner with a publisher, or you need to become a publisher. You can't just be a developer making content and be successful. We all have those you know, lottery ticket stories from the past. Those days are over. Thank you very much. So I don't, if anyone had any questions, great. I, or cricket sounds. I actually okay. have a question. Yes, please. How are you doing? Um, <clears throat> when you were talking about charting. Yes. And you showed some examples, you know, titles in the top four. Mm -hmm. and, the, and those titles are probably doing a lot of units every day. And you, you, your quote was, you know, they're spending a lot of money to be in those charts. Yep. Is that money specifically paid user acquisition? I believe so. Are there any other ways you can be in, that, in, the, in those charts? Or is that basically it? I mean, the, the, the function of being in those charts is, is down, uh, downloads for top and free. And then, of course, mm -hmm. grossing is just transactions. Um, but the volume of, the, of those installs, a high percentage of them is due to the advertising that's being bought. And whether that's CPC, CPI, CPM, whatever the advertising campaign is, it's paid customer acquisition. And rough numbers, because people may not know, like to be in the top 10, like what are you talking about daily downloads? I, I wouldn't want to be misquoted, but it's going to be a very high percentage. 100,000? 100, 100, uh, for free? Yeah, yeah. probably. Okay. I mean, if, someone, if someone's making $600,000 a day, I would not be shocked if they're spending a very high percentage of that, like over 50% right. to stay. Well, 100,000 users, it's like $200,000 a day to get that's those users. Yeah. Um, so you said you need to have a publisher or be a publisher. You know, is Wild Tangent a publisher? Or we, we are a publisher. We're also a dis we're, we're distinctly a distributor on, on Android and Windows, and we also uh, announced recently that we're a publisher as well uh, across okay. iOS, Android, and Windows. Should people talk to you? Are you the guy? Uh, I can get you in touch with the right people. No, okay. Actually, yeah, you can talk to me. Okay. Anyone else? I don't need the mic. It's okay. No. <laughs> Sorry. The mic is required. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, wow. Um, so uh, you talked a lot about customer acquisition, but I'm under the impression that the uh, App Store, Google Play, whatever they're going to call themselves in a year from now, essentially are gonna focus not only on how many customer downloads you have, but how long they're staying and how many people are leaving. So what focus do the self-release titles, uh, you know, anyone essentially has an app have to take on retention? Because- uh, Yeah, I mean, uh, I won't click all the way through, but it was, a, it was the first thing I put up there, which is re retention tuning is job one, right? Because if you can keep a user long enough and they, you know, make it a habit to play your game, if you wanna use that term, you can fix monetization. If, if you can't fix retention, then you don't really have a product. Well, I see, I see a lot of these companies, though, with lower retention rates that are in the top four. But since they're spending so much money on you know, customer acquisition, there is a potential for you to swing in right. with a you know, lower, whatever, lower customer acquisition cost because your retention rate is higher. Is that a potential? Is that a possibility? Yeah, no, I mean, like the way we think of it is that there's whatever your CPI, your average CPI is in order to buy something. And then there's, you know, you can calculate it and call it eCPI, which is the better retention you have, the lower that eCPI goes. And then our, then your revenue is above that. No. So even if it's a buck an install, but I can I can keep them long enough, or I can get some with some in, invitation mechanism, I can get nine other friends. Then the eCPI is ten cents in that case. 
And that's, you know what I mean? Like, you got to think of it as the net customer acquisition cost, not just the per install cost. Cool. Thank you. Cool. You mentioned that um, user acquisition costs a lot more in Australia and um, England, or uh, Canada, sorry, um, since everybody uses that for their beta launch. So I'm wondering if you have any alternative countries to suggest. Uh, that's tough. Uh, I mean, England, I guess. I mean, it's New Zealand. New Zealand's gonna be really small, um, and you know, because they have more sheep using the smartphones than people. Uh, but yeah, I mean, the, the, the whole point of Canada was that it, it's similar to us. I, I wouldn't be scared off too much about the cost for customer acquisition in Canada. It's more of an observation that it is becoming the norm. Um, it's not astronomical. I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't fret about it too much because the amount that you're going to spend is going to be pretty nominal. Um, you just need to get a couple thousand users, see what's going on, statistically significant usage so that you feel confident that this is what's happening. In a, in a generic audience. You're not going to spend tens of thousands of dollars. Thanks. Cool. Um, localization. The world is flat. Americans don't get out very much. Um, what do you see the role of a publisher being, um, given that it's totally inconsequential where you are these days, you know, with a mobile phone and, and content? No, it's, it's a great question. I, I think you, you want to find a publisher that has um, you know, insights into the various markets, whether it's you know, Europe, Latin America, or Asia, um, in order to find the additional partnerships that you need for customer acquisition. I mean, obviously, your game is going to have some spectrum of compatibility, depending on what it is, on what market you go into. So you know, some of the games that we build, we try to make it where there's literally no text. Right, so it's uh, there's there's no translation, and it's also very uh, amenable to, to any market. Other games, that's going to be tough, and there's also the cultural fit. So I do think that you want to focus on who you know who understands those markets, and also who are they who are they working with in those markets, rather than just someone at Apple, right, or someone at you know uh, X, Y, and Z distributor. Great. Thank you very much. <laughs>